two possible green routes, west main to east main, west main to the siding. Those are both false. 259 has three yellow options, west main to east main, west main to the intermodal yard, and west main to the siding. Again, all of those are false, so your 259 rate is true. I'm going to pull up one of the conditionals here, the 257 green, so you can see the expression that's inside this. So we have our 257 green expression. First thing it's looking for is turn out LT1 closed, and turn out LT2 closed, and turn out LT4 closed. If all three of those are true, it continues on to the sensors. LS1, which would be the westbound main inside the OS at Richmond. If that sensor is inactive, in other words, no train occupying that zone, and sensor LS3, which would be the next block heading west on that main line. Hmm. Then it comes down and looks at the next signal, which is LH281, the next signal going west. And if that signal is not red, you see the not qualifier there, then that gives it the okay to set the signal LH257, which is the signal we're working with, to green. So once it, when all these conditions are met, that signal goes green. If any one of them isn't true, it's not green. Is there any way to set it up so that you have like a universal way to look down the line? Or never mind, it can't look down the line because it's just a bunch of random numbers. Yeah, e each one has each to be numbers. programmed individually. But it's not that big a deal. The cool thing, uh, I told you how I discovered the way to write basically an else uh, function. So I'll pull up this conditional 257 red. What it's doing here is it's looking if green, if the first condition, the 257 green, is not true and yellow is not true and flashing yellow is not true, then it goes to red. Rather than having to specify if this crossover is that way and the, you know, if this sensor is on, it doesn't matter. If it's not green, flashing yellow, or yellow, then it's red. Nothing else matters. That really simplifies things. Made it a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> and we're talking about these switches. That guy, to that guy, to this guy, to that guy, to that guy. Oh yeah, this guy. And that guy that goes in a intermobile. And our new computer stand, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. The wires and the computer. And there's also and the, the, the next logic element is signal 261 and 263. Those would be the westbound signals for the eastbound main, so the ones right next to the, the last one. And we bring it up. And it has very similar, it's got a, a green, yellow, red. And then for the lower signal, the diverging routes, two green options and three yellow options. Hmm. And again, red is if none of the legal routes are true, then it drops to red. So what we can start doing here, you can see the way some of this functions by starting to throw some of the turnouts and signals. I've set up a little bit of a CTC style control. So this little red button here sets the direction of traffic for signal 257 to westbound. So when I turn that on, it goes green there. If you come over here and look in the signal table, that just set our switch two signal 257 to a yellow over red. Now the reason that's yellow is because it's looking forward to the next signal, I believe it was 281, and it's seeing that it's red. Therefore, you get a yellow. If I change 281 from red, 257 just went to green. Hmm. Now, if we simulate a train coming through here, the first block that it would hit would be sensor LS1, which is west main in the OS. So I'll turn that on. Signal just dropped to red. And the next block would be LS3. We activate that again, it's still red. Drop the West Main OS, drop the other block. Now it can come back to green. So the nice part of some of the interlocking functions 
because this little light is green and gives us our westbound traffic, you can click on the crossover and it won't throw. This is the actual arrangement of the crossover. I can try to throw it all day long and it won't change. If I clear the direction of traffic and click on it, the other icon changed. The same holds true if we turn on a detection sensor over that turnout. I can try to throw it, but it stays the same. Hmm. Release the detection, and now it's like. Cool. So, yeah. It's uh, been a lot of work. There's a lot of work yet to go, but it's coming along. Just the first of many. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is the first four signal heads of, God, I don't know how many. <laughs> this is train club. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of them. So eventually this logic table will have uh, bunches and bunches of logic elements in it. We're not going to do the lower level, right? Or are we going to get... I'm not sure at this point. <laughs> I say we shouldn't do it. I'd like to be able to treat it as a, a yard. Yeah, just um, one big... It is a big it is, yard, it technically. Is. We'll see. I think the, the lower level will likely end up with a, a physical control panel. Something but, uh, like that. But I, I'm thinking one big control panel for the entire lower level. It's hands in the way. That's not you know, a knee buster. And with video cameras so that people don't have to walk around on their knees to be able to see things. We'll use the iPhone. <laughs> we'll just get a whole bunch of those there iPod Nanos. What, 150 bucks? <laughs> you can watch your train and listen to your favorite tunes. <laughs> right, Will? Hi. Let's see. That's the Pacific. There's another one. And hey, look, there's one over there. But it has a flight, so you really can't see it. I have some work to do. There's still some bugs in there. But it's going to come along. Great. The first of signaling. Step one. Figure out how it thinks and how you want to do it. Logging out. That. Oh, dry off, oh, I would say. Oh, you're turning it off. Never mind. 